fertilize the sick. <coughs> that is to be identified. And that is very important. You see, without any academic background, most of them, they started from zero and they became the hero. <laughs> so their lifestyle, their life sketch, their understanding, their struggles, that is to be studied. Nothing less and nothing more. In the senior university, telling something very worthy. I don't think it will pay you something. But if you analyze the lifestyle of those people who have struggled a lot, and most of them, they came out of the houses because their parents, they were happy with them. Because of the erratic behavior or irrational behavior, they came out of the house and ultimately they went back to the house with a very big hero. Now how it happened, gentlemen? Their life sketch, their lifestyle, their struggle, that is to be studied as an entrepreneur. And what entrepreneur does? He takes the risks, he arranges money, and what Professor Shalomar uh, saying that he becomes the hero. He is the king of his kingdom. He has got no boss. He is the boss of himself. But before that, you have to create such a kingdom. That is the most important part of the job. And Professor Shalom has said about his family background also, that what about his family, that he came out from a very, not only should I say, a family which was in economic hardship, but because of the honesty of his father, he could come up to this point. Gentlemen, what I also personally believe, that honesty is very important. You want to become a very good student, it does not matter if you are not honest. You can help yourself, you can help your family, you can help your country. So honesty is very important. In this session, let us try to understand the realities of life. Let us try to be honest in our first and years. Thank you all. Some people don't need any preparation to make wonderful speech. Professor Selimba is one of them. Um, good evening everybody, so far this speech has been given by six academicians from business background. Now someone is standing on dais who is not an academician and is not from business background. So what I will do, I will say something about law, I will say something about constitution, I will say something about jurisprudence, dilute it so that you can think about it. our constitution. And I would proudly say, this is one of the best constitution of the world. If you look into it, you will see the preamble of the constitution says categorically for a society free from exploitation, for a society where justice will prevail, social justice will prevail. It also votes for emancipation of peasants, emancipation of workers. It also says um, to form a very society free from exploitation. But one loopholes of our constitution is that it does not say how this social justice, how this egalitarian society, how a just and equitable society can be formed. And that's why we have to concentrate on these issues like entrepreneurship, social business, and development. Three ideas. Entrepreneurship is a conception, social business is a conception, and the result will be development. Development of the country as well as development of the people. Now, with this aim, how can we really eradicate poverty? How can we really form a just and egalitarian society? It's a very difficult question. You simply cannot take uh, the properties of the rich people and divide it from the poor. That is injustice. You can't do it. Islam does not allow it. Our legal system does not allow it. It's illegal. It's injustice. And so, this is the practice. How how we can we can develop um, uh, our entrepreneurship? or a society who can contribute to developing themselves as well as contribute to developing their passions. I personally a big fan of Amartya Sen, not only because uh, he is a Nobel laureate, but also because he is a big fan of Bangladesh. So he says, how we can produce justice? If we improve the capability and if the people get salary or reward, this is commensurate to their capability, he says that is justice. So, 
to improve the country's economic situation, to form a just and equitable society, to form a society based on distributive justice. According to Shen, we have to improve the qualities or capability. And there also come this entrepreneurship as well. So, if we only produce graduates who want to be a job seeker, so the whole Bangladesh will be full of job seekers. Who will give them job to? As Professor Yunus says, you have to think not to become a job seeker, but also have to become a job creator. That is very important. And that is the idea we also want to penetrate in your uh, in this four years education in every department that once you become a graduate, not only think that you are a job seeker, but also you should think that you can be a job creator. And that's why ideas like innovative uh, idea of business, entrepreneurship, uh, all these things are really, really, really important for all graduates at the university level. For Bangladesh, we have wonderful opportunity to convert this country to a good I went to Japan a few years back, and I have seen being the most civilized, one of the most civilized countries of the world, they are facing one serious problem. Because in Japan, most of the people are aged. They have few younger people. But on the other hand, in Bangladesh, I don't know the exact statistics, but most of the people are young. So if we can convert them uh, into entrepreneurs, uh, or train them uh, how to become a good entrepreneur, obviously they can create lots of jobs, they can significantly contribute in the economic development of the country. And uh, I personally believe you came, we interviewed, you came uh, a few months ago to attend the Social Business Academia. We have seen their extraordinary good campus. Uh, a number of wonderful people is working there. Uh, they are not only contributing um, in Malaysia, but they are really contributing globally. We are very happy that uh, the Center for Innovative uh, SME, uh, social, uh, SME uh, suspect, yeah? Suspect, yeah. Suspect, uh, rendered their hands of cooperation with an English university. I meet uh, Professor Fauzi. Fauzi, sorry, Fauzi, a wonderful smiling face man. Um, it's very difficult when you see him. Uh, to consider him as an academician, always laughing, yeah. very funny, uh, but a very giant academician and when we approach him that we want to make a collaboration with him, he just asks one question. Do you want to be a computer university generally? I said, yes, we want. And he just signed it without any legal opinion, without any second thought. Of course, out of my own interest, no doubt. Uh, but uh, that's the broadness he has. That's the broadness this center has. I'm sure we in the future will have more collaboration with SISMED. I'm looking forward for the MAO, in fact, because that's the legal framework we need to work. And uh, we have four wonderful academicians. I'm sure uh, they will cooperate us uh, to arrange a future exchange program where we can invite Malaysian students or UK students in Bangladesh. And as well as UK, we can invite our students to their campus um, to see and visit Malaysia. Uh, in Bangladesh, if you want to come, I have to say you must go to the village. Dhaka is not part of Bangladesh. Dhaka does not reflect Bangladesh. If you go to a village, you will see how people are surviving. What a strength in Bangladesh is had. People is living just beside the river. Three months, they live just above the water level and in the rooftop. Three months, I have seen in the eyes. A number of people is living in the hilltop with enormous risk. A number of coastal people is suffering um, natural calamities every year. But they are surviving, they are struggling with an extraordinary workforce. We have extraordinary strength to survive and extraordinary strength to develop. If we convert this strength into entrepreneurship, obviously, in a very short time, Bangladesh will be one of the most uh, mentionable middle-income country of the world. As a matter of fact, I want to share, uh, in a comparative study between Bangladesh development and Indian development, we surprisingly appreciate the development that, that has taken place in Bangladesh rather than in India. He has shown a chart, and he shown that 50% of the Indian population 
still exposed to open sanitation. While in Bangladesh, only 13% people is exposed to open sanitation. It also shows that in India, still 30% people do not have safe water. But in Bangladesh, only 0.5% people are deprived from the right to have safe water. So that's the top. So he, he appreciates the Bangladesh model, Bangladesh approach of development. So I will not take that much longer. Uh, thanks everybody. I thanks uh, the team from the UK. I know they came for a very short visit and it is their last minute arrangement uh, to attend our university. Um, despite that, they consented. Um, they uh, came here to visit the university, said a few words, and uh, uh, informed the students. I'm sure it's a great opportunity uh, for the students as well as the faculties to have a multidisciplinary and interdisciplinary approach. Um, I'm sure we will work in the future. Uh, thank you, everybody. Now I would like to invite Professor Dr. Nurul Mohan, Vice Chancellor of Dhaka International University. Professor Dr. Nurul Mohan. <laughs> Entrepreneurship development. Entrepreneurship is, is not a is a new development in this area of the of, of the world. But entrepreneurship is not actually a new new talk, new concept. In the 18th century, entrepreneurship uh, concept actually came into uh, came uh, came uh, to, to this world through the contributions of French writers. But now, today it is an urgent necessity in our country. Entrepreneurship. Without entrepreneurship, we, we cannot have digital development. For digital development, entrepreneurship is essential. Our, our development has not been very steady. There are so many loopholes in, in the process of development. And if we are serious about it, 